Good morning, garden friends. This is September 28th or 29th, and September's been such a crazy busy month. I really haven't been out here getting garden videos for you of the Secret Cottage Garden. Um, I started one in the beginning of September, and I don't think I even finished it. And then I tried to start another one mid-September, and I don't think I finished that one either. Um, so I'm gonna do one today, the end of September. Lots of things are still blooming beautifully, even though it's fall now uh, in the Secret Cottage Garden. And I'm gonna share with you what's going on. Now I'm in the middle of tearing up pathways and digging up and dividing irises. I did a video on that and everything's kind of dripping everywhere here with water because we got rain. We got rain last night um, and we've been so dry. I didn't expect it to actually rain, which is beautiful out here this morning. Absolutely beautiful. And um, so many things are just laden with water drops. I got to get some photographs too of things in the garden, which are just beautiful. So let's get on our tour and see what's going on in the garden. Still along the wall, I still haven't gotten the hostas planted in the ground and that's still a plan in progress, but it's not priority. So. I am still working along this area. I've got the bench mostly cleaned off from little potted plants and starts. Um, and then that will either move forward or come out of there. And right along there are the hydrangeas I rescued from the bargain rack at Lowe's. They were pretty pitiful looking. I did share something on Instagram and Facebook on those. They were really sad looking, but I potted them up and they're doing great. They're gonna go up against this wall over here where the bench is because that's the only shady spot really in my garden. One of the few, I think I have two shady spots in the high summer. And um, these are the type of hydrangeas that like the shade. They're not the paniculata that like the sun. So that's why they're going there. And then the, in the white container right here, that is one I had to dig up that the gophers were eating over in another portion of my garden. So I'll take you closer to the other one I dug up and how it's doing. It's just been flourishing since I potted it up and put over here. Before we head over there, I just wanted you to see, this is my Sharifa Osma rose. And I had to dig it up because of the gophers. It was in the front garden and potted it in this just a regular nursery black pot. If you can see it down through there, um, nothing fancy but it has flourished and it seems to like this spot. This is where that uh, tremendous sweet pea was all summer, right here on a uh, obelisk. And it finally came out, it was done. And I, this rose was just over here a ways to the left out of the camera. And like I said, it just seems to like this spot. It gets a morning sun and afternoon shade. And then in the evening it gets a little more sun. So it's kind of a, a different spot but uh, when I placed it here I didn't want the ugly pot showing so I just put some other plants like here's a boxwood in front of it in a terracotta pot and then a, uh, another rose that I had to dig up and so it just looks pretty there and is blooming away all through September and it's just bringing me delight now this is a David Austin rose called Sharifa Asma this is one that has a story behind it I had three of them and one year we had a super bad freeze. But before the freeze came and killed all those roses, um, I had pruned it and thrown the prunings in the compost. Well, the next spring I found as I was spreading the compost that one of the canes I had pruned off rooted and I potted it up and this is that plant. And I lost all the other mother plants, the three of them. They were not own root. They were uh, grafted onto something like Dr. Huey. So even if they would have um, grown again, they would not have come true because they died to the ground. Whereas own root, if they die to the ground, the roots can live and then it will come true. So meaning it will come back as Sharif Asma and not as the grafted root base. So. That's her story. She is a survivor and she's just gorgeous. So there's that hydrangea over in the corner. It's in a pot and that looked pretty sad 
as sad or sadder than the one I just showed you it, that's uh, just got dug up and re-transplanted into a pot. Um, and now look at it, it's just going gorgeous. It struggled at first because the roots had really been eaten down by the gophers and just tormented. So um, I was afraid I had lost it, but look, it's coming back and surviving and thriving actually. It really seems to like this spot and I'm gonna keep it in a container because though I thought I had been rid of my gophers, they are back. So I will keep it containerized. Now the, here's this fountain. This arbor, which I think I spoke in another video, I am thinking of moving it. So I'm gonna go ahead and be able to garden behind the studio. Right now I just have my compost bin and things grow wild back there. So, um, but I wanna add it to my garden. So I'm going to move this. So this fountain is gonna be moved, et cetera. And I'm gonna put stuff here and put a pathway here. It will go around my moss heart, the path, because I just love my moss heart and I'm not moving it and it's really filling in. I just did a video on it, it's up on my YouTube and I'm also working on a blog post showing this step by step because I know some people aren't into videos. So anyways, let me point you directly down. You see that? That's my Eryngiums, my sea holly. I did not expect them to bloom, but look, they're putting on flowers. And if we continue to have a warm September, October, I should say, um, I will see flowers. So that is exciting for me. And the little plant below it, or next to it, I don't know, let me see if you can see it. You might be able to, I can't see it in my little monitor. Whoops, sorry, I'm trying to twist it. Down here, there's another flower bed coming up. So I'm thrilled with that. Now I have a bunch of little plants I started from seed that I'm placing around other gardens in here. And um, I am excited for them for next year. They're still teeny tiny. This caladium hasn't done well. I don't know if I'm overwatering it or what, but it's going. And here's a surprise. This was a white swan echinacea seed I planted there and look, it's pink. So I want it all white in here. So I may dig this up and transplant it, but it's still a real pretty pink and I do like it. It's just not what I wanted here. So I wanted white like it's all its neighbors, but the one next to it came up white. So who knows what happened? So right up here is my beautiful pink black eyed Susan vine. That thing has just been tremendously healthy and vigorous in the garden. I had meant for it to climb only the fence here, but instead it chose to go drape down the back wall, which I did share some um, video on or photograph on Instagram and Facebook of it draping the back wall. I may go around there and video and see if it's open because of the rain, some of them the blooms uh, knock down and are closing. but. It's still been just a tremendous, another thing I'm gonna do for next year because it's been such a great asset in my garden. There's the morning glories. They always come back themselves. Lots of seeds in the ground and they come up. I have to pull more than I leave, but it's okay because they really fill in this time of year and are pretty. So my poor little dahlia, but it's just from the rain. I had just picked some bouquets from this one Looks like I need to trim it a little bit more, but it's been a really good grower. It is in the ground, so I'm hoping the gophers leave it alone. We shall see what happens with that. Now, a lot of my others I've been digging up and putting into one gallon or a little bit larger pots and planting in the ground. I'm gonna see with heavy mulch if I can overwinter them in the ground. So hang on a minute, I'm gonna back up. Yes, the beautiful, okay, it's escaping me for a minute. Gara, sorry, this is petite pink. It has really been a winner for me. I'm not a big fan of Gara because they get kind of weedy looking to me. And this one doesn't. It stays more compact and clumpy. Therefore, it doesn't look as weedy. So big winner. Now remember the name, petite pink. And that one is a more compact version. Let's go along here. I still have my Jupiter's beard right down here in the pathway. 
and I will get to that. I keep saying that and I just haven't yet get, got to moving it because the pathway is going through there. My moms are doing beautiful, my pink mums. They're just in that black pot, nursery pot. I, um, of course, got the little four inch, you know, containers of them a couple years ago and had them as display in different containers. And then when it, winter came, I just plopped them in these larger pots to grow. I had some, I have some ground cover in there and um, they have done beautifully. They overwinter. I trim them back in July and they come back in this time of year when there's little pops of color needed in the garden. This corner is going to get some makeover here. I'm going to be digging up some of the dahlias and putting in pots and burying them in the soil. Um, my dahlias here, I'm not sure why, were mostly foliage and not as many blooms. Now I could have probably trimmed them, nothing, something, I don't know, but this, uh, I've got some work to do in this corner, so I need to dig some of them up, but I won't toss them. They will go into pots. Now, as you saw in my intro, right over here, my purple fountain grass is really laden with the water. Droplets, it'll perk back up after it dries, but this has been a lot of fun. I'm gonna put this in the ground. It's supposedly not hardy here, but I'm gonna give it a whirl and mulch it heavily and see. I'm borderline for this, so we'll see. Um, it was another bargain plant at Lowe's and I numbed it up because I've always wanted to try purple fountain grass, but I wasn't gonna pay a high price if it wasn't gonna overwinter. So being I got it on bargain, um, I went ahead and I'm gonna test it out. There's the centerpiece full of the purple wave petunias. Love this, the lighter pink ones I do believe are, uh, what do you call it? volunteers that cropped up from last year. Uh, one thing about wave petunias, they do go to seed and many times will volunteer. At least for me, they do. They come up in containers I've had them in. I've had, I've used, reused soil. I dump my soil in um, my container soil in the compost. The seeds have lived through that and come up in at different things and uh, I love them. I love, love, love them. Now I always do buy a six pack or two come spring because uh, I want an earlier start on my petunias than the ones that for me come up from seed. They take a little while to get going for me, but they're always popular. My surprise dahlia back there. Let's zoom. I may just go up there. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Isn't that thing gorgeous? I did not expect an orange. I didn't order an orange. Where the orange came from, I don't know, but I'm loving it. It has dark foliage and these bright flowers. Right now they're perfect for the fall garden. And it's really just started a couple weeks ago blooming. And there's a truck going by our back alley. There's some tree guys here the other day when I wanted to video <laughs> back there so I couldn't. So I don't know if you can see, let me on top of the fence, a little hummingbird has landed. Yeah, that's his usual perch. He comes in for the feeder that's behind me. So let's go around and I'm going to show you some other things. You can see how we've moved just a little over to the right. So the orange dahlia is right back there. And look at if you can see it. Let's see back there. You can see the, um, that's the Peaches and Dreams hollyhock. And it's just, it's still blooming. Got little blooms. It's been tremendous. I want to make sure I get seeds and, or let the seeds drop there to read, to germinate and get more next year. And if I let them germinate now, they will bloom next year. I wonder what that guy's doing down there, making racket. Anyways, my zinnias, I did these mid-July and um, they're just blooming great right now. Fabulous. I've been picking them for bouquets, giving away, and they keep on going. We have had a warm September, very warm September, and I'm hoping October will continue and I can enjoy them for another month. So let's go and look behind the pathway behind. Now this is where one of the changes is happening. Now where the zinnias are, there's a path right down there. I'm gonna move these beds from the back here. They're only about, oh, three feet wide. I'm gonna make them wider. Therefore, the pathway is gonna be part of the bed and where the zinnias are is probably where the path will be. So I can get more, I wanna get some shrubs going or larger plants 
that will fill in along the fence and that may be evergreen. So you see there's a hog wire, I call a hog wire fence there. And in the winter, I can see right, if I'm looking that direction, you can probably see the roof of my neighbor's house, but I'm looking right into their backyard. And I would rather look at greenery. So I'm gonna to try to find um, something that's not too big, that stays green all winter, and will fill in back here and provide that privacy screen I'm looking for. So along here, my iceberg climbing rose is blooming beautifully. I need to get up there and tie back or to the arbor, the canes that are going out to the left, and that will prevent them from getting broken when we get some heavy snows, which we usually do in winter and spring. My Cleome is starting to bloom. I have a white one in there. And love, love, love. Those got a really late start because my first batch got taken out by spider mites. So um, I started another batch and I'll show you some others next. Well, down here you can see my other Scotch Moss Heart that is just starting. That's the one I did the step-by-step -step video of for you. And um, it's filling in nicely. It's taking a little longer because my kitties seem to want to lay in there. So it kind of inhibits a little bit, but um, it's still doing okay. I was trying to figure out how to put stuff in there so they don't lay on it, but I haven't figured that out yet. I'm sure there's something. So this is a very popular solar fountain. This area here and above it, I have a bird bath hanging. Um, I did that because I had found a little dead bird in my fountain because I think it was uh, too far down. It was trying to get water and it fell in and it couldn't get out. So I made a shallower bird bath up here for them and they don't have to try to get into the big one. Okay, down here I have some cone flowers along the edge. They're kind of looking peaky. I need to give them a good trim back and let them fill back in and or just neaten them up. So over here, let me zoom you. Let's see, you can see. There's my Cleomies blooming and I got white ones. Last year, or last time I started from seed, I didn't get any white, I just got all the purple and pinky ones. And I'm so thrilled. I, for some reason, have a thing for white flowers in my garden. And I don't know what it is, if it's the calming influence of white against all the other bright colors, but I do love it. So I was thrilled, 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 thrilled that I got some white Cleomies. Now you can see my greenhouse back there. You see that some of the new panels, um, it's working beautifully, getting all the new panels in. Um, we didn't know exactly how many we would need and we've pretty much run out. So I need to do another order. Now the first set of panels, I think he said he has two more. Um, the box of panels cost $400. So to fix it for 400 and or, because I'm have to order another um, box, it'll be $800. But as opposed to buying a brand new greenhouse, it's quite the savings. And these panels have been on it for since 2003, it's almost 20 years. So I cannot complain about having to put a little more money in it to repair it. So that being said and you know what we found out as we were replacing it it wasn't really the panels that failed it was the gophers tunneling underneath um, made areas of the ground become so uneven that it sank and so therefore the um, wood sections separated a little bit in areas so the panels didn't fit snugly and when the snow pounded on them it popped them out so um, we're going to have to figure out a way, since I can't seem to be rid of the um, gophers, I've got to figure out a way. We're going to have to shore it up. If you hear a bunch of things pinging down, that's the squirrels um, knocking acorns out of the oak trees around us, and it's falling onto the rooftops. So let's see. Down here, let me, let me zoom out. Down here is this flower bed that I filled up with a lot of drought tolerant plants and let like there's some verbenia in here. Um, my lime green Nicotiana, which I loved, 
it started showing signs of distress and then I found a gopher tunnel in this area so the roots might be getting eaten on by the gopher but up until now it has been the most gorgeous thing and it's still pretty but um, yeah like this I didn't know if it was just the kind that was going over for the season or if it was the gopher but I I haven't figured out how to collect seed I know there's a way I need to look that up because I do want to um, reseed this next year and see if I can get it to come up so down in here is my Bill Wallace hardy geranium it has these beautiful little delicate purple flowers I'm just loving this thing and I have this here to keep it supported because it gets up and it can be floppy if it doesn't have support um, but and it deserves support because it's just gorgeous and then um, I don't know if you could see this here down here oh, I might get closer but that is one of the um, petunias that is a vintage petunia see look at it they call them climbing petunias also but these are the true old-fashioned petunias that most other petunias are hybridized from and this thing's gotten massive but they also smell so gorgeous hopefully that was in the camera because I can't see <laughs> but yeah I don't know if that was might not have been let me show you again just because I want to make sure that's my ring camera okay here it is I was trying to support it on this ring too but look at that gorgeous thing now it's kind of droopy from the rain but once the Sun comes out and gets on everything I think everything's gonna perk right up and love the rain they got beautiful so yeah my uh, verbena bonariensis I need to deadhead somewhat and it'll reflush prettier I mean it's starting to fade in color um, and I know a lot of seeds have fallen in here but I'm gonna let them come up next year because that was a really pretty bright spot and I had pulled it out of a lot of areas this spring thinking I didn't want it there and I really wish I would have left it because it would have been bringing a real bright airiness um, to my garden and I just have to remember those things I've got a bunch already coming up and I can't wait for next season I'm having a really good time out here prepping everything I'm having as much fun now in the fall garden as I do in the spring because I'm getting things ready for next year I have more of a solid idea of how I want things to go and um, getting things implemented so it's all good I'm looking like I need to change my battery so I'll be right back so let's take a nice little overall look here's by the studio where we walk and then you see the centerpiece there I've got to take that hay rack down it won't hold up there under the snow so I need to get it down and tuck it away for the season and next year I'll know I will have to either put a drip system in it or um, maybe some succulent so it doesn't take so much water the petunias just didn't do well there briefly very briefly it did they did but it wasn't worth having them in it the whole time down here in this pathway the this is all this was volunteer and it came up in pots and I potted it along or I planted it alongside the pathway here and it was so vigorous I took the weed eater to it to kind of trim it back that is tiny Tim Alyssum. I get the seeds from botanical interests and I'll make sure I put the link in the um, description box below but uh, it's tremendous it just grows so healthy I didn't seed any this year because so much came back from last year it had reseeded itself so I got all of that for free so there you can see my lime Nicotiana. There's my gopher trap. I was trying. I saw the tunnel there, and I put it in. Um, nothing yet. So I might have to move it, find a new tunnel. Down below is my cream brulee phlox. Definitely doing that one again. And when I, I still haven't seeded my cool weather flowers, I'm going to seed it in a raised bed um, and make sure I get some more. And I have another one, a pink one, uh, white with pink. Um, that I'm going to put in and that's something I can seed this time of year and get flowers next year so I'll have a video on doing that I'm a little late I honest to goodness but it's still worth a shot getting my cool weather annuals in so all along here oh there's still some pots pl potted plants staged here this rose was a gift rose and I don't know where I want to put it I'm beginning to work on my back hillside and it may go back there so the other path over there 
and you can see um, that is a lime coral, a lime something coral sedum. And beautiful, it's done beautiful in that pot. And I'll divide it up and I'll put it out in places in the garden as along the pathways. And I just love, I'm into chartreuse green, I'm into white, I love purple foliage. So different things like that. And this will stay pretty much evergreen. It kind of looks a little scruffy in the winter, but it, it is for the most part evergreen. So I'll take a, give you a quick look of the veggie patch, what it's looking like right now. It's a kind of a tight space, so it's hard for me to get in there and really give you a view. But um, volunteer hollyhocks, these came up, reseeded themselves and just came up this summer. And uh, next to it is a tomato that's been doing good, but it's kind of small and I have tons of other tomatoes, so I may go ahead and pull it out. I just haven't gotten there yet, and, but it's still producing, so I'm a little hesitant to yank it out. Uh, along the fence, you see back there, even though I've got the backlight going, um, is my zucchetta, also called trombolina squash. It's a great as a zucchini, if you want to saute it, whatever. Keeps its texture. It does not become mushy like other zucchinis can. So that's one reason I love it. And it has a slight artichoke flavor. But left on the vine, it is like a um, winter squash. And it, what is the squash everyone loves soup? made out of it. It's not coming to me at this moment. Uh, but it, not acorn squash, it's right there on the tip of my tongue. Anyways, once this um, matures and hardens the outside edge, you can store it over winter in a cool place. Butternut, that's what I'm trying to think of. Butternut squash, and it has the flavor of that. So it's a win-win because you can eat it as like a zucchini or you can let it um, harden up or mature like a butternut. So I'm going to move us in there. I'm going to show you the one raised bed that I'm going to sow some of my cool weather annuals in. Down here is one of the, my metal raised beds. I had some tomato squash and I have the basil in here. I'm not done collecting or picking basil, but this is the bed that I'm going to sow some of my cool winter annuals in. By the time um, they come up and I pick them, then it later on it'll be time to put my tomatoes out. I can't put my tomatoes out to almost June first, therefore, the these will be um, ready to come out pretty much. And or as they sprout, I will put them in other beds or other areas. And um, I could transplant them come spring, but I wanted them right in one section. So I have posted here and there about these raised metal beds. I need to do an entire blog post on them. Um, I have been loving them. This is a brand called Stratco. I have found them at Walmart. I have found them at Tractor Supply. I had found them on Amazon. Um, I really like the cream color of them and I wanted them all uniform. Also Northern Tool has raised metal beds and I have found them to be a decent quality as well. So I have this one here where I'm going to sew my Cool Weather Annuals. And then there's one over there. That one I have my lettuce in that I reseeded. Um, it hasn't, I got a lot of things came up from seed. I have a larkspur coming up in there that fell into it and decided to sprout. So I need to pick through, find out which is the lettuce and what is um, other things I don't necessarily want in here. Now my, right now my um, cucumbers are growing over the little mesh. You, I, if you watched my video on Supports, garden supports, DIY garden supports. That's what this metal, this mesh is. This is remesh for concrete work and it fits perfectly in these raised beds in between and it makes a nice little, sorry that cut out on you, but my camera card was full. Anyways, so since that has the hoop over it made from the remesh, I will cover that and hopefully I can extend my season for my lettuce. Uh, I seeded some in there a month or so ago. I haven't really noticed if it's come up, but I got a lot of things coming up in there, as I mentioned before. So on the fence still is my zucchetta. It's also called trombolina squash. I may have mentioned that already. I'm kind of catching up again on my video, but I like that it created this privacy fence or the privacy. Go away, bee. Um, 
so I don't have to look down into my neighbor's yard. I have, I need to find something more permanent. So like in the winter or early spring, I'm not looking down there into their yards either. So I just have been thrilled with that squash. That is one squash all along. And that is a 16 foot section of uh, cattle panel. So that tells you how big it is. And doing great. My tomato there. That's my early girl. It started as soon as it's still putting on tomatoes like crazy. It is almost October. We've had some pretty chilly nights um, down into the 40s. So I don't know how much longer I will be getting tomatoes, but I'll keep picking as long as it keeps producing. Down here is um, the two, there's two zucchinis in here. They're called Astra. There's, they're four containers absolutely delicious and it stays a little more compact than other zucchini plants so I've been thrilled with it um, I didn't mean for two to be in there I didn't notice two until the other day I was looking I am gonna go ahead and sow some more lettuce in here underneath all of the other plants when it comes time to pull up the other plants or they die off from frost um, I'll just cut them off I won't pull them up and disturb the lettuce so, and that's fine. The roots will just rot away in the winter, feed the microbes in the soil and be perfectly fine. But I can go ahead and get my lettuce seeds started. Last year when I started seeds kind of late in the fall, um, they grew a little bit and then they kind of hibernated. And then come spring, I had really yummy lettuce. And this is one spot that gets a lot of nice sun. Uh, what little sun I get in the winter on this back garden. Oh, and one of my ladies laid a hen, uh, an egg. So over here is my other tomatoes. I have failed to post yet my um, showing you how I tied or weaved my uh, tomatoes up through this piece of remesh. I really liked it. I didn't have to do any kind of uh, string or anything. And I just have weaved in and out the tomatoes and they're quite tall. That thing is six feet, over six feet tall. and. The tomatoes are right to the top. It looks like one of them needs some water, so I need to make sure and put my soaker out here. And that pretty much is my veggie garden. Down here I have a dahlia in a container right here. And um, I need to move this. Maybe I'll move it over there a little bit where it's out of the pathway, but this was the only spot I had for it. <laughs> and once I got it here, it was a little heavy. So it's a really pur pretty purple. I think it's Thomas Edison, but I'm not certain. And up here, right here, is my hyacinth bean vine. I've been collecting the seeds. Um, it didn't have a lot of foliage this year. It had mostly flowers. So it didn't cover the uh, obelisk like I wanted, but that's okay. I will try again next year and maybe do four plants around it. But it was really pretty while it was blooming. And even the pods are really pretty. So there you have it. So thank you for joining me today on this garden tour and I will see you in the next video. I'm not even sure what I'm going to do, but I'll see you there. <laughs>